Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do different forecasting techniques. Even before taking you to different forecasting methods, I want to show you what are all the methods that's available. When we talk about forecasting methods, there are two important techniques that's available. One is called as a quantitative technique. The other one is called as a qualitative technique. Quantitative techniques are used when we have got a lots of historical data and most of the time we will be working with the quantitative models over here because we can see the historical data is available. Using this historical data we can always infer or we can find out what is the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable. In order to do this we can take two important models either we can focus on the time series model or we can focus on the casual model. Within time series itself we have gotten lots of model. We have gotten the most basic model called as a naive model and after this naive model we have got a mean method and then moving averages, weighted moving average exponential and linear regression in terms of a trend projection all that can be identified using a time series analysis. On the other hand when we want to identify whether this whatever the forecasting that we are using is happening other than the time factor then we call this as a casual model. In order to do this we will be using a linear regression and multiple regression. Let me take you to the first model called as a naive method. No formula will be used for the naive method. This is extremely simple to calculate. This is one of the most simplest method. We are given with the year wise data over here and then the actual demand. Now they are asking us to find out what will be the forecast for the month of June. This is what we need to identify. Whenever we work with any forecasting technique, we always leave the first forecasted demand as empty because we do not have any previous data. We just take January month data for the February forecaster data 45. This will become the forecaster data for the month of February. Now February's actual data will become the forecaster data for the month of March. Then March data will become the forecasted for the month of April. And April month data will become the forecaster data for the month of May. And May month data becomes the forecaster data for the month of June. The demand for the month of June is 40 units. This method is extremely simple to use. Let's move on to the next method. Let's move on to the next method called as a simple average method or in other term we can call this as a mean method. In order to calculate the forecasted demand we take the average of the previous years and then we calculate. Let's get started. At the first level we do not have previous data so I'm marking this as an empty one. For the second year, I'm going to take the previous year demand similar to the naive method 310 for the second year. Whereas for the third year, we are going to consider the previous two year data. The previous two year data becomes 310 plus 365 divided by 2. This will give us 675 divided by 2 and in turn this will give us 337.5 337.5 for the third year data now let's calculate it for the fourth year in order to calculate for the fourth year we take the previous three year data over here so this will become 310 plus 365 plus 395 whenever we are bringing in new data I am marking this in blue color divided by 3. This will give us 1070 divided by 3. This will give us 356.67. I am rounding it off to the nearest number 357. The forecasted demand for the fourth year is 357. Now let's calculate it for the fifth year. For the fifth year we are going to take the last four year data so the last four year data becomes 310 plus 365 plus 395 plus 415 divided by 4. 
This will give us 1485 divided by 4. This is 371. The demand for the fifth year is 371. For the sixth year, last five years data we are going to take. It becomes 310 plus 365 plus 395 plus 415 plus 450 divided by 5. This will give us 1935 divided by 5. This gives us 387. The demand for the period 6 is 387. For calculating it for the 7th year, we take the 6 year information. This becomes 310 plus 365 plus 395 plus 415 plus 450 plus 465 divided by the number of periods. It is 6. This becomes 2400 divided by 6. This gives us 400. The forecasted demand for the period 7 is 400. This method works best when you do not have more years of data and less number of years of data as well. I'm sure you have enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining. Stay tuned for more such videos. This is Karpakam signing off. Good day.